We're now into the holy month of Ramadan and that means that Muslims all over the world will be fasting for the next 20 something days. And you know what's fascinating about this month long fast? The world does not stop for those who take part. Even though they will be without food and water for a large chunk of the day, they will still have to go about their daily activities as normal. Workers will still go on with work, students will still go on with school and of course, footballers will still go on with training and playing when they have to. But um, without food and water? How do they manage to do this without fainting? And not just once too, over and over again. We've had a lot of Muslim footballers ply their trade in the Premier League over the years, so let's see how those ones have fared. In the 92-93 season, we saw the first Muslim player in the Premier League, Mohamed Ali Amar, more commonly known as Naeem. Since then, we've seen hundreds of ballers of the Islamic faith grace the league and even dominate it. Right now, we have Salah, Mahrez, Ziyech, Mane, Kante, Mendy, Pogba, and many more Premier League superstars who practice Islam and have had to play while fasting before. Very notably, last year N'Golo Kante put up a man of the match performance for Chelsea against Real Madrid in the Champions League semi-final, covering 11.38 kilometers while fasting. Oh yes, the former Leicester man did all that madness with nothing in his stomach. That is really crazy. To show you just how crazy it is, here are some ways the fast affects players. Of course, there's the obvious part of a drastic change in diet which can really affect players. A footballer requires three healthy meals a day, but during the month of Ramadan, the most Muslim athletes can get is two. Also, there's a likelihood of dehydration as the players also can't take any liquid during the hours the fast is on. Then there's the messed up sleep pattern. A good sleep is essential for athletes to stay healthy, strong and ready for the game. But since Muslims have to be up very late in the night during Ramadan to prepare the fast for the following day, their sleep schedule gets pretty much destroyed. In addition to all that, research shows that 80% of Muslim athletes have said that the annual fast affects their endurance, while 70% said that the fast affects their mental concentration. And there's also usually a drop in energy levels, a change in bodily rhythms and a higher possibility of injury. So, as you can see, it is usually more than just an abstinence from food. Why then do Muslim footballers fast? Can't they just forfeit it? Well, you see, fasting from sunrise to sunset during the month of Ramadan is laid down as a mandate for all Muslims in the Quran. And it doesn't exclude anyone based on their type of job or their status in society. As long as you identify as a Muslim and have reached puberty, you must abide. And not just stay away from food and drinks during the period, also take the month to self-reflect, worship more, be more understanding of and patient with people, be more generous, generally be a better person. It's a period to build a better relationship with God and with other people. But in spite of it being an instruction from the holy book, the Quran didn't say that it would be easy. Pogba confessed to it not being easy, but said that his professional nutritionist has been helpful in his dietary changes all these years and he has pretty much gotten used to it. Colo Toure said that the most difficult part for him was not being able to take on any fluid. According to him, the first week is the hardest, but soon after, your body adjusts to it. And that has scientific backing. Apparently, any type of intermittent fasting may take time to adjust to at the beginning, but the body usually adjusts to whatever new pattern you subject it to eventually. It's the same way that your body adjusts to eating a lot if you pick up that habit. Now, it would appear that, apart from religious benefits, intermittent fasting actually has some health benefits, but it's a lot more complicated for athletes who still have to expend so much energy so often during the fasting period. They run the risk of having their bodies go into ketosis. But this is where the nutritionists come in. They educate the players on what to eat and when to eat them to prevent the fast from having adverse effects. Also, leagues all over the world are making sure that their Muslim players don't suffer much during the holy month. These days, if the time the Muslim players are supposed to break their fast falls during a game, they are usually allowed to quickly go and do that. Remember when Ziyech and Masrawi had to break their fast in the first half of a Champions League semi-final game? The Ajax pair got all the support they needed. It happens a lot in the Premier League too. Games are halted for a bit for those fasting to quickly go grab a bite and a sip on the sidelines. We have seen it done for Fafana, Koyate and many other Muslim players in the Premier League. And even when it is the entire team that needs to break their fast, it is still no trouble. They are allowed to do just that. But sometimes when they are not allowed to, the players still find a way around it without breaking the rules. 
like when these Tunisian players took advantage of their goalkeeper's injury to quickly run off and break their fast really quickly. Basically, Ramadan has been a part of football for years as it is a part of the lives of many footballers around the world and if you don't look too closely, you may not even know that these players are abstaining from food from dawn to dusk because these guys still manage to produce top performances even while fasting for an entire month. So, from us to all our Muslim brothers and sisters around the world, both the footballers and non-footballers, Ramadan Kareem, we're sending you love and strength as you observe the fast in this holy month. For more videos like this, like this video and subscribe to the channel. Also, turn on the bell notification so you don't miss when a new video drops and we'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.